progress has been positive for most workers, I, I can point to at least one class of worker for whom the story has been very different. For these workers, technological progress has really not had anything positive for them. Uh, technology has completely decimated their work, it has completely eliminated their jobs, and there really have been no new opportunities at all for those workers. And the workers I'm talking about, of course, are horses. <laughs> and if you look at peak horse employment in the United States, <laughs> In 1915, there were about 22 million horses. And by 1960, the number of horses in the United States had collapsed to about 3 million. So obviously, that was not a good thing. So, so the, the question I want to present to you is, is it possible that human workers could face a similar fate, something similar could happen to, to our human workforce? And I'm not obviously talking about people actually disappearing the way horses did, but in terms of their work evaporating. Now, you, you may have a very powerful and, and almost reflexive reaction to that. You may say that that's absurd. How can you compare people to horses? I mean, horses are obviously very limited. They can only do a certain number of specific things. And in fact, when cars and trucks and tractors came along and, and those machines were more efficient and more effective at doing basically everything that horses could do, then horses had nowhere to turn. They had no other options. And that's why their work has disappeared. Human beings, on the other hand, are, of course, intelligent. We have the ability to learn, to adapt. And, and in theory, human beings are infinitely adaptable. Uh, we, can, we can learn to do new things and move into new areas. And you might argue, I think quite rationally, that that characteristic guarantees that people will always have work because we will always be able to find something new to do. And I think that that's obviously a correct comparison, but here's the thing to understand. While it's true that humans are obviously dramatically di different from horses, it is also true that the machines which will threaten the jobs of people in the future are dramatically different from the machines that displaced horses. And perhaps the most important difference, the thing that sets apart the machines we have today, is that those machines increasingly have the ability to learn and to adapt. And what that means is that technology today is no longer just displacing people in particular jobs or in particular industries or taking over specific things. It's really beginning to encroach on the fundamental quality that really sets us apart as a species and on the fundamental quality that so far has allowed people to stay ahead of the march of technology. So I think that that's something to, to really think about. We may be looking at something that is really genuinely different. And you know, th this is an idea that I think kind of sits at the intersection of economics and technology. And economists as a group never really want to hear that this time is different. They're always extremely skeptical about that. On the other hand, in the realm of technology, this time is always different. That's the whole point of innovation. We're always trying to go to some place that we haven't been to before. That's the whole nature of progress. And so I think perhaps one of the fundamental questions here is, is this really a subject that is mostly about economics or is it about technology? And I tend to come down on the technology side. I think that there is no universal law of the universe or even of economics that says that people will always have to be part of the loop. There is nothing that says that human beings must always be essential to the production process. I think it's fairly easy to imagine a future where smart machines are able to take over a great deal of the work that's actually demanded by the economy as it produces the goods and the services that we, that we want.